model-based reinforcement learning algorithms fully rely on the prediction model, and thus learning an accurate model of the environment is vital. But environments can be very complex, high-dimensional and very unpredictable. Nevertheless, current model-based algorithms that operate in high dimensions, like pixels for example, approximate the next stage in a deterministic way, assuming only one future. It's like predicting the direction of a ball that follows a random direction. Deterministic models predict with low confidence all the direction at the same time. In this video, I explain the paper model-based reinforcement learning in Atari that proposes a new prediction model on pixel based on the correct assumption that environments are stochastic and unpredictable by using a stochastic video prediction method. In this way, it is able to predict multiple plausible future from every state. Then they use this model to learn the policy or value function with a model-free algorithm. Most of the reinforcement learning algorithms learn only from past experience. They are called model-free algorithms. But what if we want to plan ahead? We as humans try things in our head using an internal model of the world before taking decisions. Why not using a similar mechanism in reinforcement learning? This is the idea behind model-based algorithms. And once you have a model of the environment, also called world model, you can learn any policy by running simulation from within. You don't need to interact with the real environment anymore. How can you learn a policy? Well, for example, with a model-free algorithm like PPO or DQN. You know, the major problem of these methods is the elevate hunger for data. But with a world model, you can run faster, more safely simulated trajectory inside the model. So data is not a problem anymore. Now, explaining the high-level idea of model-based methods, I omit to explain what is a world model. It is a function that maps the current state and action to the next state, plus a reward. That's exactly the same interface of every environment, like those in OpenAI Gym that you may be familiar with. But as you can see, we shifted the problem from learning the policy to learning the model. To learn the model, you still need iterations with the real environment, and those iterations need to be representative. For example, running a random policy for few iterations is not the correct solution, because the data will be representative only of a local part of the real environment. Somehow the data collected to train the world model should be aligned with a good policy that explore and acquire data on the most salient parts of the environment. A good strategy for doing that is to learn and update the world model and the policy incrementally. The model is trained using the data acquired in the real world with the latest policy, and the policy is updated with the simulated data from the real world. That's exactly what Dyna does. Indeed, Dyna is the most popular high-level strategy behind many of the contemporary model-based algorithms. Dyna works in cycles, repeating three steps. One collects new data from the real environment with the same policy that we are learning. Two, learning the world model using supervised learning techniques with all the real data acquired so far. And three, training the policy within the world model using reinforcement learning. That's a very powerful strategy that is used also in Simple, the algorithm that we are reviewing today. But so far, nothing new. As I said at the beginning of the video, the interesting part of Simple is in its predictive model architecture. See, 
Simple focus on learning a word model on high dimensional pixel space. And things get complicated when you realize that most environments like our world is highly stochastic and unpredictable. Sure, you can neglect it and assume that it's fully predictable and just learn a deterministic model. But your prediction model will be unreliable and consequently also the policy learned will be very weak. Simple develops an architecture that incorporates a certain degree of stochasticity into the system that allows it to generate plausible trajectories. Let's see what it means. To predict the next frame from the current frame and action, Simple uses a skip connected convolutional encoder decoder architecture, where the embedded action is injected in each one of the decoder layers. Also, because a frame is not a complete state of the environment, it takes as input the last four frames to catch additional information. To fully construct a world model, you need to predict the reward as well. Indeed, you can see the additional module for doing this. Then we get to the interesting part. To predict plausible futures instead of a deterministic one, it takes inspiration from the method developed in the paper Stochastic Variational Video Prediction that build a stochastic variational method for video prediction. Simple uses a secondary convolutional network called inference network that approximates the posterior distribution given the current and the next frame. This posterior distribution is learned during training when the correct next frame is none. Then a value is sampled from this distribution and discretized before passing into the latent space of the encoder decoder architecture. The role of this additional network is to model the stochasticity of the environment and by sampling one possible outcome from this distribution, you are choosing only one possible future that is then decoded by the decoder neural network that produces the RGB frame. However, during inference, you can condition the function on an unknown next frame. One option is to sample from the approximated posterior distribution, but simple uses a more neat and effective solution. It learns a recurrent neural network to autoregressively predict the discrete values, so that during inference, only a forward pass is needed to generate a sequence of bits that will dictate the stochastic outcome of the future. It's a very neat and quite good solution, as you can see from these videos. The predictions remain realistic also after many, many steps a result that will be impossible to achieve with deterministic video prediction models. In particular, the left video shows the simulated environment, the middle one shows the ground truth data, and the right their difference. So with a word model that can approximate faithfully their environment, Simple runs a lot of simulated trajectory inside the word model and then use PPO to learn the policy. In particular, the simulated rollouts are 50 steps long and they start from a real observation that has been sampled from the ground truth buffer of experience. And this greatly improved the efficacy of the algorithm. During the experimentations, simple repeat the main Dyna loop 15 times. And overall, the agent learns from 15 million interaction with the simulated environment. Also, on each step of the 15 iterations, the agent interacts with the real environment for about 6,400 steps for a total of 100,000 iterations. The main use of these real interactions is to learn the model, but also to train the agent in addition to the simulated experience.
Now regarding the results, I should point out that model-based reinforcement learning as well as all reinforcement learning is still in infancy phase and many times the ideas are much more important than the final performances. Here Simple demonstrated the ability to learn a word model that deal with the uncertainty of the model by combining three very interesting strategies. Results are a plus, especially compared with model free algorithms. The results reported in the simple paper that I will uh, explain in a moment are based only on the Atari games, but model based algorithms may be better suited for other environments. With this premise in mind, let's briefly look at the results. To show the sample efficiency of their method compared to other model free algorithms, they trained simple only on 100,000 of real steps. In particular, they compared simple with a tune implementation of Rainbow and PPO, showing the greater sample efficiency of simple, as you can see from these bar plots. The results of Rainbow is shown on the left, while PPO on the right. Their bar shows the number of interactions that an algorithm, Rainbow or PPO, needs to match the score of simple. The red line in this case is the simple method. Almost on every game, model free algorithms require much more experience to match the results obtained by training simple on 100,000 iterations. But as of today, these numbers aren't much more representative anymore because a newer paper currently under review demonstrated that a specialized version of Rainbow can be much more simple efficient, almost at the same level as simple. By the way, I'm planning to make a video about this paper that argues if model-based methods are really more simple efficient than model-free algorithms. So make sure to subscribe. For now, we just evaluated the efficiency of simple, but what about their asymptotic performance? That's one of the major disadvantages of model-based methods. Simple is not the exception. The black line represents PPO, and every point above these lines means better results. Instead, a line below means that simple is underperforming. We can see that simple outperform PPO when 10,000 to 40,000 real interactions with the environment are used, but then it plateau, showing a lower asymptotic performance. A simple strategy to obviate this problem is to use simple only as an initialization point, but of course with the drawback and the difficulties that brings designing and training two different algorithms.